So um, what I'm going to do first is just explain the kind of checks that there are. So as I think you probably all know, DBS took over from the old CRB checks, which were the Criminal Record Bureau checks. Um, DBS now stands for Disclosure and Barring Service. Those, it's just another uh, name really for what used to be the CRB checks. And they were brought in to try and safeguard vulnerable adults, vulnerable children, well, all children actually who are classed as vulnerable, but vulnerable adults as well, um, in all situations, employment and voluntary situations. There are five types of DBS check. Um, the first one is a basic DBS, which is simply a criminal record check. So an employer who wants to employ anybody for anything might just request a criminal record check. Um, it's even if you're going to work in a shop, maybe, and they want to check you haven't got a criminal record, there's no vulnerable people involved, there's no children involved, they might just ask, can you give me a basic DBS? These you can apply for yourself. So I as a member, you know, I as a person, an individual can get on online, say I want to get myself a basic DBS and I can go through the paperwork, do it all myself. You don't need any person to do it for you and anybody in the UK can do it for themselves. It's it's minimal. It doesn't it doesn't give us any information about whether there's been any convictions, whether there's any pending convictions, whether this person has been barred from working with anybody. So in, in the voluntary and the vulnerable people world, it's not got much use other than to say you're not, you know, you're not a criminal. <laughs> Um, the second check that there is, is a standard DBS check. Now, often what I will do after this um, meeting, by the way, is I will send my notes to Lorraine so that you can pass them on. <laughs> so the second type of check we have is a standard DBS check. People get this and a basic check confused. A standard check is similar to the criminal record check, but it also reveals all your spent and unspent convictions. So if you've if you're going to work somewhere and you've got convictions pending or you've had them um, in the past, it will reveal those as well. Slightly more use than um, a basic check. Standard um, DBS checks are used very much in finance. I know somebody was talking about um, working with finance and and this sort of thing. So standard GBS checks are often requested by people going into finance to financial institutions because it shows whether they've got convictions for fraud, finance problems like that. It doesn't say whether you're allowed to work with children or whether you're allowed to work with vulnerable adults, but it does give you that financial stability. Um, and the good thing about this is I did, I did a load of DBS checks for a banking organization re recently, and they were all standard because that's what they do to their members of staff. So that's quite useful to know. You don't have to go for the full enhanced um, one to be able to do a standard check. Um, then we have the enhanced. So an enhanced DBS check includes information from the police national computer, as well as the local police forces. This is useful in regulated service, but to be, to be honest, if you're doing an enhanced check, in my world, you might as well do an enhanced check with a barred list, which is the fourth type of DBS check, because they show exactly the same, they cost no more money, Yet the enhanced with barred allows you to see whether that person has been barred with working with vulnerable adults or with children. The only time you should just do an enhanced check, but we'll talk about this further in a little bit, is if the person isn't in a regulated activity, um, which we'll come on to in a minute, I'm just working through the five. And then there is also something called a first check, which is if you're employing somebody in a position which they will need a DBS for, so if you're employing them maybe to work with children or with vulnerable adults, you want them to start the role immediately and you haven't got time to wait for the DBS to come through, you can do what's called a first check, which um, allows you to see whether that person is barred from working with whoever they're going to be working with. It's quite useful because it means you can get them into employment straight away. Um, it doesn't work so much with children. It depends on the activity you're doing, but it works very well with vulnerable adults because it checks um, who they're going to be coming into contact with, that sort of thing. So it's, you do have to pay for that one. I think it's £17 at the moment, but I will. It, they, they change depending on which organisation you use. But a first check is, is very useful 
if you, if you need somebody to go now, and you've got them there. <laughs> and that comes back within 36, 48 hours, something like that. Um, so those are the five different types of DBS checks that you can get. All of these DBS checks, except the basic, um, ask whether you're entitled to ask for a DBS check. So you can't just ask anyone for a DBS check. As one of you mentioned a little bit earlier about the company they were going to work with 50 people, they said, oh, we all need to get DBS checks. Um, you only have the right to ask if they're going to be involved in regulated activity. Regulated activity is anything where you're unsupervised with children, children being under the age of 18, um, or vulnerable adults, which can be young adults, 19, 20, 21, or any kind of adult. Um, it can be vulnerable due to finances. It can be vulnerable due to health problems, person that you'll be doing personal care with them, that they've got an illness or some kind of um, debilitation where you would need to help that adult. Um, healthcare as well, and anything social work. So if you're advising them because, um, they're vulnerable, any of that classes as regulated activity. Things that don't, or where you're going to be left alone with that group of vulnerable people. Things that don't necessarily class as vulnerable adults is if you were running an adult dance class, for example, um, and the adults were just general public that were coming but weren't, um, that weren't vulnerable in any way. Um, it's very hard. I mean, sometimes we need to almost fix these roles to what our need is. If if we feel that we need a DBS because of the group we're dealing with, that they're they have mental health problems, or they're older, or they're younger, or they're vulnerable because they never get out and they they don't know the world around them, that sort of thing, then they do class as vulnerable. But we have to be careful not to do DBSs just for clubs for example for example the, te the tennis coach if you were just running a, a tennis business for adults there wouldn't have been no need necessarily for you to have a dbs if that became vulnerable adults or children then the need for the dbs would then come into force um it's against the law for somebody to apply for a role be it voluntary or um paid if they know that they are barred from working with that group so Although this filters out those people, if somebody has been barred from working with adults or barred from working with children, it's actually against the law for them to apply for a position um, where, where they will be alone with those, those type of people. Um, I'm just looking, people are asking me things in the chat. How about parent and toddler groups? Yes, because you'll be dealing with children, you could be left in the room alone with them. Um, technically, if it's if the parents are always there and you're never left alone with them, but you are still working with the vulnerable people, even though the parents are there. So I would if you're a parent and toddler group, yes, I would always get the leader to have a, a DBS in that in those circumstances, because that leader is working with the children, even though the parents are still there. And you never know what will happen. Sort of a parent might become ill and a child will need looking after. Um, also with these DBSs, the cost is an implication, obviously, especially if you're a charity working with paid employees. A paid employee will need to have a DBS check if they're, if they're required, but they will have to pay for that. A paid DBS check for a paid person is exactly the same check as one that's done on a volunteer. There's no difference whatsoever in the actual check themselves. But the government asks for money for people that are in employment. They don't ask for money for people that are volunteers. Um, and unfortunately, a voluntary DBS is not transferable to being a paid one. And a paid one is not transferable to being a voluntary one. And that's simply about money. It's simply about, you know, it, the government want the money for those that are paid and they don't for those. There's nothing, no difference in the check. Um, a way around this or a good thing to advise people is that they can be put on what's called the update service. So if they've undergone the DBS process and got a certificate, they can put themselves or you can put them on the DBS update service. For a voluntary role, this costs nothing, but it does have to be redone yearly. So you just have to update it yearly. You don't have to do the check again. You just have to keep it up to date. The For a paid person, it's £13 a year. So it 
it's still worth it. Um, and then what that enables a person to do doesn't make it transferable as such, but if another organisation wants to employ them or wants to use them as a volunteer, they can log on to that update service and see that they have a certificate and that since the certificate was issued, there's been no convictions. So especially with, I mean, especially with volunteer roles, that's quite a, a worthwhile thing to do to get your volunteers to sign up. And they have to do that within 28 days of receiving their certificate um, through the post. So, yeah. Um, and that's it, basically. That's that's the DBS process um, and, and what the different kinds of checks are. But I suspect there's sort of more specific questions that might you might want to know about which relate to which organisation or relate to certain um, vulnerable adults, vulnerable children, etc. So if you want to ask away, that would um, we can kick off with that. May I? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sorry. Um, so uh, let's use my example. Um, <laughs> a befriending service. Yes. Uh, for people aged six, 60 plus. Um, now, it's going to depend on obviously whether maybe they might come from a vulnerable background. It, uh, I'm unclear. Who knows? You, you don't know the, the, the potential client that you're going, right. to, going to work with. Um, I'm assuming that the volunteer uh, training coordinator and myself, because we're likely to have direct contact, would have to be uh, checked. And, and if it were me, I, I guess I would probably go for the enhanced one. Yes, enhanced with the barred list, I would go for. Yes, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, with, with that, the befrienders themselves, will they be going in, meeting these people one to one? And will they, they be going, could well be. I mean, the, and the, going into their homes and things like this? Yeah, the offer will be yeah. telephone support and or face to face as, yeah. they, as they, you know, they get to know the person. So even with telephone support, if the individual had, there is a potential there for grooming or for fraud or for, yeah. so I would, yes, I would definitely in that situation go for the DBS because they have the potential to cause harm. Okay. No, that's fine. I, I would agree with you on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I saw some. We've got Terry's got his hand up. Terry, there you go. Oh, sorry, I missed the little hand. <laughs> <coughs> That's all right. It's only just in the corner of the screen. Um, <laughs> you mentioned five. I only got basic, standard, enhanced, and I uh, first uh, checked. I didn't get the fifth one. Okay, sorry. One, so that was the finance. Um, yeah, well, the, the finance is usually the standard one, but there's yeah. basic, standard, enhanced, enhanced with a barred list and the first check. All right, so enhanced with a barred check. Yeah, there's enhanced and enhanced with a barred check. It's a different, um, got a form around here somewhere. So on yeah. the back of the form, um, I don't know if you can see there's, yeah. it's to, you, there's a, a box here that says, do you want the barred check as well? That actually means that they'll check the yeah. barred list as well, so yeah. But you can do an enhance without that, but I don't really see much point in that. Right. <laughs> yeah, and is the um, DBS check transferable, as I said earlier? I am I'm the chair of Rother Seniors Forum. Yeah. So we actually see people sometimes one to one that have got dementia or had a stroke or got some other learning difficulties. And we'll probably go to the, their houses to see them. Mm -hmm. And then the other um, coat I wear is that, as I say, once a year, I'm involved with younger people. Um, and of course, some of the children get dropped off by the parents, although they're in the um, care for by the teachers, they do come to me to ask for questions, ask questions. Yeah. And um, I feel as those to cover myself, I need a check. Now, is it transferable? Um, in that situation, you're talking about one organisation that works with vulnerable adults and one that works with vulnerable or, or works with children. Unless your adult certificate says on it for children and adults, no, it's not. You have right. to have 
there is, is you can do a DBS for a child and you can do it a DBS for adults or both together if you're working with children and adults, but you can't you can't work with children on an adult certificate and vice versa because they are two different um, strands. Yeah. yeah, you can, as I say, you can do a DBS for both. If you're a person that's maybe working in a hospital, a nurse could have one for children and adults and that would cover her for both. But no, you do have to have the two separate. But you've also raised a point which people might be thinking, can you transfer between two organisations? So if you're working with a dementia charity, maybe, and a befriending charity, can but they're two separate charities, is that DBS suitable for both? That is entirely down to the charity. So if I worked for ABC Dementia and I worked for CDE um, Befriending Service and I had a, a DBS check for ABC Dementia, it would be up to CDE befriending charity whether they would accept my dbs that's done from the other charity thank you very much thank you yeah any other questions things i haven't covered for anybody hi zoe sorry i've lost my camera okay. <laughs> um, i'm disembodied now but uh <laughs> yeah i was just wondering a bit more about the first check that's really yeah. interesting i haven't heard about that before mm -hmm. um so it's is it basically it shows you the barred list yes part but not the criminal record yes okay okay yeah. great and you said there's a you said it's 17 pounds did you say it depends on the organization you go to um I will have to come back to you with the, what the government actually charges but I know for example that we charge or my organization charges 17 pounds and I I can't remember what the government part of that is, probably something like 13, but it's not it's not extortionate. Um, but okay. it is useful for, yeah, if you want to know whether that person's barred with working, as I say, especially works with the vulnerable adults more than the children. Mm, and is that um, is the cost you mentioned, is that regardless of whether they're volunteers or not for this one? Uh, yes, I believe it is on that one. Yeah, okay. I think that is it. I will I will go back to them and just check that. Um I'll just put that in my notes to come when I send the notes to Lorraine. So yeah, presumably, like you say, you can get somebody started straight away if it's kind of urgent and then that gives you more time to do the the full enhanced check. Yes, you can you can at least think, well, I can put that person with those people and I know they're not barred from working with them. They might yeah. have a record or they might have convictions, but then I can I can make the decision whether those convictions are relevant to the, the position mm -hmm. anyway. Because of course, you even if you have a conviction, it shows up on your DBS certificate. I had an example of somebody the other day that gave me a DBS certificate and said, "Look, I've got, I, I was fine. You can use me. I've got a DBS certificate." And I said, "That's fine. Thank you. Can I see it?" Yeah. Without seeing it, you can't see whether there's actually convictions on them. Yeah. And this this lady gave me, without a word of a lie, seventeen pages of convictions on her DBS. Now they were 30 years ago and they were something for something totally irrelevant to the position she was applying for. So there was no problem. But yeah. my point being, always <laughs> before you see somebody's DBS, because just because they say we ha I have a DBS doesn't mean to say it's clean, as in, or that they're not, they might not be on the barred list, but they might have done something that you'd rather than not work with the voluntary or the vulnerable for. Yeah. An example of this would be, I mean, I, I work a lot with students, language students. And we always check all our host families, obviously. And a, an example of that would be if they've got like maybe drunk driving convictions and they'd be transporting the children around, I would have a bit of a concern there. But if they mm -hmm. have shoplifting when they were 20 and they're now 50, it, the, the concern isn't there in quite the same way. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Somebody Hi. else? Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, no, Leslie, go ahead. Sorry. I've lost Leslie. Oh, there she is. Leslie, you're, you're on mute at the moment. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so um, firstly, um, how long do the convictions stay on as EBS? Do, would you know if somebody's, you know, if, obviously if you're doing the new DBS, could it be, is there a certain length of time? So that's one of my questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go on, sorry. So that one, yes, they tend to stay on there, but they say whether they're spent or not. Okay, so they'll always stay on there. And the other thing is, as an organisation, we are required to check people's ID. Yes. Well, I wouldn't, know a, I wouldn't know a false passport if it appeared me on the bottom. I mean, how do, you know, how do we, are there anything, 
anything that you know particularly we have to look for or because I mean, you know that's a good question actually obviously uh, always check the photograph um the place of birth is quite interesting especially if you're looking at a passport because one of the questions on the dbs is the place of birth and often they get that wrong if it's fake i say often i have not come across many myself either but um that has happened um uh, proof of address is also as you know you need the proof of address and if that doesn't marry up with the driving license or the passport and there's lots of different names and it's spelt differently on one thing to another thing I mean that's that's the sort of thing you're looking for with a passport always check the front cover um, as well as the photo ID page it's, it's now different isn't it because you've got the two pages together mm -hmm. but always check the front cover to show where that has and look at where it has actually been issued Maybe it's a Romanian passport issued in England, and sometimes that flags up things if they don't if that doesn't tie up with where they say telling that you their place of birth is on the application form. But apart from that, I mean, if you if you're worried, what I do sometimes when I've been a bit concerned about things is I send an accompanying letter to the DBS with my form, saying I've seen the ID, this, this, and this, but I am a little bit concerned about this, and I just leave it with them, and that seems to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's useful. Um, and um, you know, some of the sometimes what we have is people want to volunteer to us with us, but they haven't been resident in the UK or you know they're from overseas or you know sometimes it's a refugee that wants to kind of volunteer yeah. with us. But, and there's always kind of that we get sort of stuck in that kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What your thoughts are around that and how we? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, so as long as they have a current address in the UK, okay. even if they've only been here for a week, right? that's fine. You can DBS them. It okay. does. This is where the problems with the DBS come, because then it would only show up any convictions they've got in the UK. And that if they've only been here a week, it's yeah. not going to do you much good. But you have, you have done as much as you can do. Because on a DBS form, you can put that they have no known address or that they've been a refugee or that they've... Um, I did quite a lot of work with, uh, with the Hastings refugee buddies, actually, and quite a lot of them were said, I just lived in Afghanistan in this road. I'm like, is that it? And they're like, yeah, yeah. That's, my address. that's fine because they had an address in the UK. Um, in terms of proving that, which is the, the ID pit is very difficult. Sometimes they can get a letter from the government if they're on benefits or support or even from the government saying that their application is being processed. Um, if they've got, it's unlikely they'll have a bank, but this is where you you get up to difficulty. However, in these circumstances, if they really can't prove who they are, what can be done is you tick the box on, you know, it says, um, have you verified their current their address for the registered body? And have you verified their true identity? It's that bit on the form here. Have you verified their identity? Yeah, you usually okay. tick yes if you have seen their ID. If you haven't and they can't provide enough, you tick no or you cross no. That goes back to the to the DBS and then they will write to you and say, you've said that you can't verify this person's identity. Um, do you want us to do police record checks through their fingerprints? And then you have to ask the applicant if they're happy to go to the local police station to have their fingerprints done. And that's a way of doing that now it's a long it's a long process and it's a bit annoying for the volunteer who just wants to volunteer but it is a way around it most most of the times you can come up with enough evidence or put that they've only been at that address for a week and then put their address history the difficulty comes is if they live abroad and want to volunteer uh, maybe it's a um, an online role or something in which case that's just yeah you can't you can't do that basically does that help that's a little bit it really helpful. I mean, um, we, you know, obviously we're part of a very large, you know, East Sussex County Council is a large organisation. So we tend to do all of our, we don't use the paper copy DBSs anymore. Okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, done online. But I just sort of think I can see where that would be quite useful to use a paper copy for, you know, sort of. Um, yes. And I mean, uh, it, technically, the, on the online version should still give you exactly the same options. So you could. Right. Should you should still be able to say that you can't verify their ID and that there is another way of doing it. Or otherwise, you, you maybe want to do a paper copy on that occasion, yeah, as you say. My experience has been that it's not the local police station. Some people sort of 
miles away. It just like seems to be so onerous for people. Yeah, it is a bit random. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. East Bond, they often said um send them to Bex Hill. I was yeah. well, Lewis. I think you know. like, Lewis is the central one. That's Lewis. why. Yeah, yeah. Lewis is the That's central. That's really useful. Though. Thank you for that. That's really useful. okay. Um, Kira, was it? Is that... No, Jane. Sorry, <laughs> you've got another question. Yeah, kind of a couple of things. Um, I do find kind of exam uh, examples kind of quite interesting. So you kind of go kind of describing the um, the families with uh, who might be having um, uh, students from overseas. Yeah, if on their um, criminal record they have drink driving conviction that would flag concern. But is it fundamentally is it a judgment call for an organisation or? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know whether whether it exists or whether you could put something together just some hypothetical scenarios and how how those would be explored you know if you if you did the first check and that said something but then um a, a subsequent kind of check flagged up a yeah conviction and what you would how you might respond to that that that, that kind of thing is always feels quite helpful okay. to me yeah absolutely I could put together some of those for you and send those with the notes um in terms of it is down to the organisation whether they accept it, except in the case of barred lists. If you if somebody's on the barred list, then A, it's illegal for them to be working in that that strain, whether it's yeah. for adults or children. And as you would be negligent as an organisation if you employed that or yeah. used that person as a volunteer. But yes, the, it is a judgment call. Yeah. Um, in um, terms of that. And there was, a, there was a second thing, and I'm not sure how this sits into the discussion that we're having, but... Um, a big problem that I, as a voluntary organisation and an RBA, would experience as well is we often get approached by young people under 18 looking for volunteer roles and organisations don't feel equipped to support them. Yes. It's a kind of a safeguarding thing, but I don't know how DBS kind of fits into organisations offering and supporting young people with volunteering roles. Is that, I don't know if this is a bit off, tap off topic. No, it, it isn't actually, because so if you were as an organisation working with an under 18 and you would have to have the DBS to even though they were volunteering again, you would still they're still they're still our children, basically. So you would still have to have the DBS to look after them in their volunteering capacity in terms of them. They can have a DBS from 16 upwards. So you could. Um, you could get a DBS done on them. It's hard because they don't have bills in their name. They don't, but they might have a passport. They might um, have a letter from school or college. They could probably get a letter from school or college verifying who they are. Um, they might, they would have birth certificates. So it is, there are ways around that. So, so if, if a, someone who was 16 or over was working with children or, vulnerable, or kind of in a voluntary role with vulnerable adults, they would need to have a DBS check. Yeah. What yeah. about kids under 16? You can't DBS check them. So um, I think you'd need to look at what they would, well, they, well, they would have to be an adult basically. At oh, yeah, sure. Um, and then you'd, even under the under 16s to 18s, you'd still have a responsibility to them as children. So you yourselves would have to have the DBS to work with them, to work with others. <laughs> you see what I mean? But it's get roundable with a bit of common sense as well, sort of, yeah, so. Um, so, go on, yes. Um, Jen, was it? I was going to say, Terry's got his hand up. Oh, yes, Terry. Sorry, I keep missing these hands. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, enhanced with barring uh, would cost £17 for paid uh, uh, operatives. How much does it cost for volunteers? And right. also, also yeah. while you're on that, the DBS update yearly check, does that cost anything? Right, so the DBS yearly update service costs £13 a year for a paid employee, and it's free for volunteers. Right. However, the enhanced, I think there's a bit of confusion with but enhanced checks. So the enhanced check and the enhanced with barred checks they are free for volunteers, but usually the organisation doing them would charge an admin fee. But they are £38 plus an admin fee for paid employees. All right. And what about just the volunteer? volunteer. That's for free 
So a volunteer enhanced or enhanced with BARD is free from the government, but the organisation would probably charge a, a fee of about seven, eight pounds to do that. Just an admin fee. Thanks very much. Um, some I, I did prime Jen to ask a couple of questions, but I'm, I remembered one of them now. Nobody's actually asked it. Some people ask me how long that they last for a DBS check. The answer is that they don't have a finite date on them, but best practice in, in both paid and voluntary organisations suggests that you should renew them every three years unless they're on the update service. I had a, another question as well. Um, it's about the yearly update service. Is it the yeah. organisation's responsibility to um, to do that? So, or is it the volunteers' uh, responsibility to to sign up for that and get the updates? It's the volunteers' responsibility to do it and to get the updates. But if you are working for an organisation, perhaps you could keep a spreadsheet or something and say, "Oh, Joan, you're you're you need to make sure you renew your subscription." Initially, it's only myself, myself as the person as the um, counter signatory or the person themselves that can sign somebody up to the update service. So you as a, an employer or as a, a project leader couldn't sign one of your members up. They have to do it themselves. So and then they get an email and, and they are just updating their current yeah. details like you know that their address is still relevant. And Absolutely. it's just the basic stuff that yeah. doesn't go through a whole criminal records check again no, no it just no no it doesn't it, it just because if you've signed up to the update service in that year before you have to re-sign up if anything happens that would put something on your dbs certificate they add it straight to the update so they know it's, it's almost like it's live it's a live certificate so they would know that it doesn't have to do the whole check again and equally if if somebody logged on to that person's certificate they would see straight away that that person had a conviction since they had their certificate done. Okay, so um, do organisations get that up, um, that reminder update as well, or do they have to log on and, and check that things are still okay? You'd have to log on and check that things are still okay. Okay, I was just wondering, because that would be useful <laughs> if we've got a little ping. I know, I know. To tell us to yeah. do our DBSs. Okay, thank you. Um, Leslie's got her hand up now. Leslie. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're muted, I think. I think you're still, that's it, yeah. Sorry. Um, it's, again, it's about the update service. So I have never been successful in actually checking with the update service. So, but I think I'm, I'm what it sounds to me like we do, they do. So you get a, a volunteer, get to DBS, yeah. they register for the update service within 28 days of them receiving their DBS. Yeah. So you're saying that every year they have to go into the update service to keep it live? They, yeah they you have to re-register like for, for a paid yeah. person they'd have to pay the 13 pounds again yeah for volunteer they have to do everything the same but not pay again right. and the dbs should send them um a reminder to do this right. on the email that they gave i know I certainly that, yeah they so they should receive that as a volunteer they might just think it's spam to be honest this is the problem <laughs> just go up <laughs> It looks very, you know, people just don't look at their emails anymore. But it's coming from a, a kind of an organisation, not an individual, which it yeah. does. It just comes from the update service. And it, to be honest, I've had quite a few volunteers come to me say, I've just had this from the update service. Is this fake? And I've looked at it and said, no, that's actually yeah. legit. But it's very hard to, I mean, I know a lot of people that volunteer aren't particularly tech. They're not particularly yeah. trusting of the internet and emails. And it, yeah, it's a shame that it is done like that, but it, but it is. Right. It's down to, yeah, but it's there. They will, they will get a reminder around yeah, the annual anniversary yeah. yeah. and they yeah. need to do it. And is it quite a simple process to keep it live? Oh, absolutely. You click on, I can't even remember what you do now, but you click on the link. Yeah. It's all information all the same. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's that's really useful. I never knew that. So that's something I've learned. <laughs> yes. 